it. Let's let's start with this. Let's just just rap about it. Garrett Nussmeyer, I thought had an outstanding game for LSU, and he's become much more important to LSU because earlier this morning, or I should say earlier on Wednesday morning, we learned that John Emery had gone down with an injury, so they down to three scholarship tailbacks and one that didn't even play against USC. So now the weight is even more, I think, on Garrett Nussmeyer to perform this season. What'd you see from him? What'd you like? What'd you, or what did you not like? Man, the thing about Garrett, I was so impressed by his decision making. Um, he was accurate with the football. I thought he played on time with anticipation. I think those are the things that translate the most as we continue to play higher level football. Right? They played a USC defense that was much tougher than I think they've been in the past. But he was able to operate the offense. Like he didn't make a ton of plays. But every time he was called on, do you know, work through progression, be accurate. Um, and I think those are the things that you can rely on in it. And he hasn't played a lot of football, mm-hmm. right? And it's hard to have confidence as a young quarterback who's just not played at that level a bunch. I know that he had the, the bowl game last year, but that's, you know, that's not really enough to draw on and have a bunch of confidence. But we saw him like throughout the game continue to get better and better and better. I was curious to to see what you saw from the standpoint of was he seeing coverages correctly? Was he picking up blitzes correctly? Because that was something that was really great to see in the end zone cam when they would do the replays with Miller Moss is, oh, he's staring down a rush and he's throwing it into windows that I don't think I could. (laughs) Me, myself, I'm not making that throw. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how much of that is him going, I'm just going to sling it because I can make it. And how much of this is, uh, no, I knew that it was going to be there for for Garrett uh, as much as Miller. I think when we look at like football acumen, you're not going to find too many quarterbacks out there with the higher football acumen than Garrett, right? Son of an NFL coach. He's been in those rooms. He's seen everything, right? And he's had the advantage of a dad who like has poured into him from the X and O's knowledge. So I, I saw him going through the reads correctly. I never saw him fooled, mm-hmm. right? I can't say that, hey, he did everything right in terms of what they're asking him to do from LSU's uh, perspective. But there was never an opportunity or a time where he got pressure and he wasn't prepared to throw hot or he got pressure and the line was sliding away. He didn't see it. You know, he gets banged in the head. He didn't have any instances like that. And I think for fans or people who aren't in that QB room, that's all we can really see. Right. And if we see that and we see him do that consistently, we, we got to have some real faith um, that he has a real grasp of that offense and exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, we're doing the QB takeover segment with Quincy Avery. And one of the reasons that I wanted to, to do this with Quincy, and I'm very excited about it, is your background in coaching quarterbacks, your background in understanding the position. Um, As much as you can, please tell folks some of the people that you work with and who are some of the folks that trust you in the industry. Man, I've been really fortunate to work with a lot of really talented guys. I got like Geno Smith, uh, Jalen Hurts, Josh Dobbs, Deshaun Watson, um, the jersey's behind him. <laughs> Justin Fields, uh, Jordan Love, um, Tyrod Taylor. I mean, I got a long list of a, a lot of guys who I've been fortunate enough um, for them to have some faith and belief in me um, and belief that I could help them get where they wanted to go. And I think that's the most important part, right? Anybody can have a guy come out and see him once or twice, but guys are like, nah, I'm rocking with you. I know that you've been able to provide me with some things that have helped me um, to accelerate my career or keep my career going the way that it is. Um, that means a ton. And and the two guys who I think it means the most is like, and this is probably going to sound crazy, but Geno Smith and Tyrod, right? Because I didn't, I didn't work with those guys when they were younger, right? We're, we're about the same age, but they saw the things that I was doing, worked them out a couple of times. It's like, no, right. We can work out with anybody in the world, but we want to work out with you. So those are the things that, you know, mean the most to me it's like being able to help guys get to where they want to go man i love that uh because as i'm learning some of the guys that you work with and i've also we, we've done some interviews in the past and uh, a couple of them have been on sundays we watched deshaun play going out here talking about throw the ball deshaun like you <laughs> you looking around you're still coaching them up man um because those are your guys and they stay your guys and that that for me means everything it means you a football coach that's what that means to me they're always going to be yours um I want to talk a little bit about college football and college football quarterbacks because that's that's my jam. That's what I do. But from the standpoint of what you see in as far as guys like – we talked about Garrett, but I also want to talk about a guy like Cam Ward that translates to the NFL or things that don't and things that you like to see. I mean, 
That dude vaulted into the Heisman conversation with what he did against Florida. They won 41-17. He had a program best debut, 385 with three TDs. But it's how he was throwing the ball all around the yard that I was most impressed with. Now, Shannon Dawson was like, hey, look, uh, the sidearm thing, that's him. I, I, I'm not going to coach that out of him. But I'm looking at you, and I'm, I'm asking, is that something you coach out of him, or is that something you just let Cam Ward go do? No, the thing about Cam Ward and the things that he's so creative, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's also very evident that there's no moment too big for him, right? If you watch that game and you watch every play, um, he feels very, very confident, not only his ability, but where he's at, right? He's at the University of Florida, right? They're in a stadium. It, oh, oh no, they're playing at the University oh, of Florida. Yes. Okay, You're yes, playing yes, at the yes, University yes. of Florida. You're in the swamp. It's rocking in there. And he looks like he's kicking it in the backyard with his boys, right? Side arms, manipulating the pocket. Um, he threw on time. He threw off platform. He created plays. He extended plays. And he's tremendously accurate through it all, right? I, I know he had one early interception, and it looked like, oh, it's not a big deal because he responded, right? And and those are the things that I think that are the most important to quarterbacks is how do you respond after a critical error, right? Because it was easy. At, at that time, he's on a new team, right? New environment. But the way you respond after an error like that and then continue to go out there like, Man, this is my show, and I've got complete control over this. Uh, I, I I don't see anybody in the college football landscape who who played better than him, right? He was he was special. Saw some outstanding plays, man. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, not just Cam Ward, uh, but all across the country. A couple other guys I want to hit on, but I want to stay with Cam for just a second because you had a uh, video that you put out on social that got my attention, if nothing else. And you were talking about the evaluation of quarterbacks and how guys get offered and how guys end up where they are. And Cam, for me, is a great example of this. Like, that dude from Texas, but he couldn't get anybody to take him seriously as a quarterback. And at Incarnate Word, Eric Morris, like, I give you I give you a shot. Like, 4,500 yards and 50 TDs. And then he goes to Wazoo, does the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Now he's in Miami doing the same thing. How do dudes, because I like to say, hey, we got football players everywhere. We got dudes everywhere. How do dudes like Cam Ward fall through the cracks? I think Cam Ward is – um, particularly interesting, right? Because he, his high school was a wing T offense. They didn't throw the ball much. He didn't get many opportunities, right? So I, I see how there's not many guys who I understand how did they slip through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Cam Ward is one of the few guys that I could be like, all right, I get it. I understand how coaches missed on this guy just because there wasn't enough evidence. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at him, he's not the biggest guy. He doesn't have the strongest arm, and he's not, like, the quickest or the most elite in terms of athleticism. So all the things, like the benchmarks you probably need to hit when you're taking a flyer on somebody, he didn't have those. Now, when you go see him throw in person, right, then, then you're like, all right, this is amazing. But you also need to understand, like, can a guy, like, read a defense? Can he manipulate the ball when you need to, right? It's easy at a workout when you know exactly what you're doing, right? I know that I'm going to drop back. I'm going to throw this ball that goes over a linebacker lands on the receiver before a simulated safety. You know that. But when you have to see things and do them in real time, that, that's what you need to evaluate, right? Those are the, the things that you have to see for you to have real faith that a quarterback can do it at a high level. And there just wasn't enough evidence for Cam Ward doing that. And he wasn't big in like the seven on seven, like that space at a time where it was probably available for him. So I think that he probably missed out on some of those opportunities to show coaches, like, I can do it. Um, but when he's at in Incarnate Word, I think that a much bigger school than Washington State should have been all over him um, to get him in, into their program rather than him making his way all the way up there. It's scary being a football coach uh, at the state of, in the state of Texas for me, dog, because it's everybody that comes out of there might be the dude, but you might know not know about it until too late. Another guy that comes to mind for me is Jalen Milrow. So I remember having him on the show because he's coming out of Tate, Katie Tompkins. He had this reputation as a runner and he had committed to Texas at the time. And I'm like, Hey man, for real. And he's like, Hey RJ, I want to go to Texas. And then Mike Yersich cut him loose and Nick Saban calls and said, Hey, you want to come here? And I'm going, Oh, Oh no. <laughs> oh no. We made a mistake. Um, that feels like it's just par for the course in the state of Texas. But a guy like Cam Ward is also, I think benefiting from the transfer portal in a way that we don't talk about. You know, like he, he would have been stuck at Incarnate Word before 2018. I don't know that he would have had an opportunity to go to a place like Miami 
where you're going to get this kind of exposure that you just aren't going to get in Pullman. I say that to say, does his age matter to you? Does him being a grad transfer matter to you if you're looking in the NFL to draft a first-round quarterback? The the way that quarterbacks are protected, right, in which age is not going to be a debilitating factor, right? It's not going to be something like, oh, this guy's 33, he can't play anymore. We're in a day and age where quarterbacks are going to be routinely playing into their 40s. So I don't think that I would be scared off by his age in the same way that uh, teams were scared off by Michael Penix's age, right? They're not going to be scared off by it. It's going to be, I think they're going to va- evaluate him pretty tough because of his height um, and because of his athleticism. And I know that last year going, when he was thinking about entering the draft, he received like a seventh round grade, mm-hmm. which, you know, that that made it tough for him to go go to the NFL. But if that's what they were giving him last year, when I thought he played at a very high level at Washington State, like, what does he have to do to change that or change that per- perception of him in terms of the things that he can do as a quarterback? Because I think that he manipulates the ball well. Like, I think he has all the tools. Um, there's no reason to me that Baker Mayfield could have been the first overall pick, right, and, and Cam Ward can't be a first-round quarterback, right, just based on their body of work. So I think that he's special, and he has every tool necessary to play at a high level in the NFL. That's what's up.